So this year's CineQuest, the theme is uh, impact and having a vision. How do you feel like your film fits that theme? I mean, to me, the impact I want to have is just trying, trying to make my way through this industry. Sometimes, you know, I end up coming across projects that either it's a script or an audition or, or buy a ticket to something. It's not really what you were looking for. Um, I know it's a business. It's it, you got to make your, you got to earn your money. However, I kind of got sick of it and wanted to try to make a film like I was searching for, which was the same thing I always did with music. You know, you 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 make it personal, and hopefully other people will be into it. But the most important part was that I was into it, and so that's the impact I wanted to have was just a little bit of uh, creating what I was looking for within the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of vision, I guess I tried to make a movie that uh, was shot in a way that I had never really seen because I really love movies about two people, especially when they're very similar but very different, like a movie like Heat or something. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I wanted to have the camera be similar but different too. Like the, the, the visual grammar, I really spent a lot of time thinking about and I think some people get thrown because it it's not shot like a normal movie, but but it was really well thought out <laughs> beforehand, yeah. and I'm really happy with it. And, and so, yeah, I tried to have a strong vision and not just do it in a very normal way. And I think I would just add that in terms of making a film like we all like and we all love and not trying to stick to a formula that was going to make sh ensure a su success or anything like that. I mean, we made a two-hour movie. It was our first feature. It was two hours. Everyone said it had to be cut down, but we didn't cut it down. This is this is about character development. This is about um, a movie like that w that we love the dramas from the seventies, eighties, and nineties. And on top of that, scoring it with all punk and hardcore music, it makes it very intense. Some people don't like that m that music, and there's going to be off putting. But it it is all so well thought out by Andrew, and it all has has to do with the characters. So to do something like that, to know that we believe in it, even though it's not going to be the easiest path forward, but do it anyway. That's the type of things that we all collectively want to create and how we want to do things. So it feels really good. And if there isn't a, any kind of impact, it would just be to encourage someone to, to not be afraid to do the same thing. When I was coming up, I was paired up with a guy like you. Nice guy. Good guy. Everybody liked him. I cut his fucking nose off. You know, Danny. James. I want you to stay in the car on this one. What? You know why. You fucked everyone's life up and you walked away. You gotta handle this. What the fuck is this? He's here because you weren't. I was out there trying to provide for his family. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? You want to provide for a family at a fucking job? Stick your fucking no. tongue out, and I'm gonna cut through your fucking cheek right now. You mentioned in the Q&A that this was really something you wanted to do and have be about your hometown. So talk about that a little bit and um, the love letter that you're sending to your hometown, but kind of in a different package. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, th there have been lots of stuff filmed in Newfoundland, but I haven't seen all of it, obviously, but everything I saw, I saw certain things in common. I saw, we're going to show the beautiful landscape, you're going to see the ocean, the people are oh, oh so friendly and polite, and I thought, you know, this is not m necessarily my full experience, I don't think it's everybody's full experience, and I think we're all a little bit irritated that it's kind of pigeonholing us, and we, c we can tell different, darker stories that ring with truth, and we can tell things that visually don't rely on the geography. And by putting it there, the place will seep into it in a very different way. Like, it, it still feels like Newfoundland, like it's there, even though we're not staring at the cliffs and the ocean and stuff. Yeah. You feel that they're trapped on an island. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that, that's something I really wanted to do. Yeah, and, you know, the other thing is, just because we don't paint this beautiful postcard of Newfoundland doesn't mean we don't love it. I mean, Mike and I have toured together around the world in a band, and we wear that flag on our sleeve. 
we tell it, the first thing we say, it's like, hey, we're from Newfoundland. This, we're a band from Newfoundland. This movie was made in Newfoundland. We love Newfoundland. This is where we're from. It made us who we are. But it's also, this is our Newfoundland. We listen to punk rock music. We know people. We know some of these black people. It exists. doesn't mean we don't like Newfoundland. This is just who we are. And we happen to be from there. You know what I mean? It's really interesting growing up on an island. <laughs> it's 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 wild. Um, it, it's hard to leave. Yeah. It's a real comfort that's there, especially when you're, you have a lot of family there, a lot of friends there, yeah. and it's it's really like nowhere else. Um, so w once you do leave, it, it'll always be home, and you always want to go back. But at least. For what I ended up doing with my life, it's like I don't know if I would ever be able to exist there again, you know, like do what all the things that, that I that I like in life. I don't know if I'd be able to make it work out of there. I'd have to do an awful lot of traveling. Um, but some people, they just stay in it and stay there. And we, we all know people, a lot of our families, a lot of our friends. They stay there and made a great life for themselves. But there was always these legends of like, you know, mm -hmm. characters around town that sure. we grew up hearing about. Yeah, um, what you—you you not being from Newfoundland? Yeah. What do you think about Newfoundland? I was just gonna ask the same question. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like taking it. this over, by the way. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. give me this. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, you're really good at this. Um, I guess I'd be—you you would call me "come from away," right? You come from, uh, I but would never use that you would never <laughs> use that because it's so—it's so. so so predictable. <laughs> I am from Northern Ontario, though, and I'm from like a, a small mining community that feels very isolated. I mean, you have to drive seven hours south, actually four hours south to get to a place called North Bay. So I know, you know, feelings of isolation and it's, you know, but it's still your comfort zone. Like you, you grow up and you know, the world is your backyard and you don't really conceive of things more than that until you leave there. Uh, but it's always, you know, good to come home. Newfoundland, I adore it. I've shot a few times out there before. And um, it's weird because you have geography kind of on your side in some ways. That's what makes it so special, but it is also isolating. Um, but it's beautiful, and there's like there's a hardness there that I think infuses um, whether it's the music, the character, the people. I mean, yes, people are warm and friendly, but I, I, I've gone out at night and you feel that edge that I think is kind of familiar. Mm. And uh, I can throw down with them. I mean, <laughs> my my character Jessica. I mean, she yeah. she has to put up with a lot of tough characters around her. Uh, as far as the production goes, though, is there was there a benefit to having such a familiar territory? Did you guys? I mean, was the pre-production a lot smoother because you guys knew where you were going and what you were doing? Yeah. And does it, you think that's something that a young filmmaker should take into account? Absolutely, especially if you're the filmmaker who's going to be writing it, because what I what I could do was I knew where we were while I was writing it. I knew places we could go, and I knew they were obtainable, yeah. and so I could set it there already, and then already be working on in my head the blocking because I knew what it looked like and everything like that, and it made it so much smoother because we'd go there, and I was like, "This is the kind of house we need for the power family. This is th I've seen this house many times. The kitchen has to be here." R the door has to be here. There has to be a staircase to the left. And all these things I'd already thought about, and I was like, I know it's easy to find because I've been in a million houses like that. <laughs> so, so we knew what we were looking for. Yeah. And I always think somebody starting out, if you don't have a lot of money, you got to write what you know. And I know it's a cliche, but I think it goes to geography too because it's going to be a lot easier to film it if you know what to expect. You can get it fast. You can get it easier. And, and I, I would definitely recommend was doing there that. Any challenge that you didn't expect that came your way? There was a couple. There was there was things I thought were obtainable, and because I hadn't been there in a couple of years, there was things I thought were still open. No. <laughs> <laughs> and some things had changed, and I was like, uh oh, that's gone now. Uh, but but thankfully, we had people who who knew of a lot of different options, and they they could present me with ten different things, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is very close. Yeah, and the other thing about Newfoundland is that um, the film community is is, is growing, yeah. and the infrastructure there is, is is growing. So there's a lot of things filming out there, like. There's a Netflix show called Frontier filming out there with Jason Momoa. Um, there's movies coming out of there all the time. So um, there's great filmmakers there. There's a great, great crew there. So it, it, there's not a lot of them. So if they're working on something else, it's, it's harder to get the time. But Newfoundland is a really great place to go film. And, and that's another reason we wanted to, to, to do this here was because we wanted to show the rest of the world just like we were a, a punk band or a, a hardcore, like sort of a heavy band coming from... Uh, a place that was known for traditional music, 
that's what we love about telling people from Newfoundland. It's like, look, you can do all these things here because it exists. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of, uh, of about your music background, you guys are very familiar with one another, and you have a very familiar process. And you guys created this band basically on your own. You did all your videos. You did all your, you you did all your albums. So, did you? kind of take that experience and Andrew you probably were around for a lot of that time yeah so I mean uh, taking that experience and putting that into an indie experience did you feel like you guys had a leg up because you had that experience yeah the, the short answer is yes uh, this type of project that we made which was independent budget all hands on deck doing a lot of things on our own um, you know, not being afraid to bring the coffee in, w whatever it takes. And that's sort of how Mike and I came of age together. Like, more than half our lives, we were part of this band touring around the world, but having to, to finance it ourselves, uh, not deciding not to deal with record labels, deciding not to deal with managers because we just felt like we could do it on our own, sending out our own records, putting up our own posters. But we were very successful doing that. And it also felt right. It felt like the right thing to do. So Mike and I talk about this a lot, you know, mu like the sound of the music aside, it was the idea of it. It was a, it was a do-it-yourself mentality that helped form who we are and helped form this project because we made this film exactly the way we used to exist as a band. And I don't think I would have had the, the stomach or the balls to do it had I not been in that band in the, fir in the first place. I, and from my end, music, was it was a very story thing <clears throat> because I was in a uh, straight edge hardcore scene and I played in a band and, and stuff like that and that and what I saw there uh, of the type of people who were in it and I'm, I'm the, the rigid rigidity of it and just the, the aggression that at the same time was it was like a polite aggression because everyone we, you gotta have a certain clean clean cut hairstyle and a lot of vegans and stuff like that but then you play a show and people are literally spin kicking each other in the face <laughs> <laughs> it was a very interesting, and and once I clued in that that the lead character would be would have been straight edge. I mean, everything came into focus, and I just was able to draw on so much from from things I saw, and just the mentality of that, and and how you can you can trap yourself by putting yourself in a box and, and making yourself too rigid. And I explored that big time. Yeah. When it came to you know us owning the band and and, and taking control of that. We went through the, this process of, you know, it's a community, it's a band, it's a team effort, and that felt really great. And we tried letting other people in to help us, people who we thought could, you know, play a play a big factor of, of growing the thing or, or helping helping us out. But they'll never care about it as much as you do. Right. And so it always ends up back in the hands of the people who are creating it. And, and, and along those lines, too, you, and then you bring in Natalie, and you guys got to ha have, have an impressive cast of guys that people would know if they saw their face. Like For Joy and St Stephen McHattie, too, yeah. who is a well-known Canadian actor for sure and beyond amazing in everything he does. And he's really spectacular in this movie as well. Uh, talk about how you brought those folks in. And for you, Natalie, uh, bringing in the process, um, what did you like about having that kind of family atmosphere? Did that help you in your process? Oh, yeah. I think the first night I got there, you invited me over to your mom's house. I got to see, you know, some of the, and your aunt was there. And my character is based on some real life people, or, or loosely based. Well, yeah. in, in the original version of the, of the script, before Andrew sort of rewrote it, the Jessica character was very much modeled after uh, an aunt of mine. So, yeah, a very tightly knit um, feeling on set, including having the director in the scene with you. The, the Andrew's shooting style is really unique, but it very much felt like, you know, uh, guerrilla filmmaking, even though everything was completely, he was so prepared beforehand, and now I really understand why. Um, but so prepared, really seamless. They were actually able to bring me in and shoot everything, all of Jessica's stuff in the first week, and it was hard to leave. Yeah, the, my only concern initially was not nailing the accent. Because I know in the breakdown you had said, you know, a slight Newfoundland accent. And then you said, you know, not to worry about it. And none of you guys really have a strong accent. But the thing that worries me is no one thinks they have an accent until they go back home and get around each other. And then the lilt comes back. And I remember asking Andrew, I'm like, can you just add one line that, you know, where 
Danny looks to Jessica if she has something to say about something. He's like, what the fuck do you know? You're not from here. Like, <laughs> just not call me f come from away. But yeah, something. Yeah. But uh, I didn't notice in the movie at all. Oh, it didn't it stick more. out to me. Yeah. It didn't matter. Um, well, as an outsider, I didn't think anything about it. Yeah. Good. Good, good. Uh, I think that the, besides maybe Robert Joy, the person in the, in the film with the strongest accent, is Stephen McCaddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but we didn't know when we were talking about getting him on board for the project that he grew up in Nova Scotia, the province right next door to Newfoundland. So I think he was really excited to slip <laughs> back into that. I don't know if he's ever had a role where he had to turn that on. So we sort of just let him do what he wanted to do, but it was great. He really punches the, the home that he realized he's, he's really what Newfoundland was. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. What's really great about it, and I only really thought about this right now, it, is that, you know, the whole movie, you're sort of living through the experiences of, of James and Danny, and yeah. they, like, very much like we are, are sort of modern Newfoundland, like, we're, we're a different generation, we don't really have the accents the same that our parents or our grandparents did, yeah. but once you meet the characters who are a different generation, that's where the accents are, and that's that's the real to the deeper. Yeah. The, that's real to life. That's how it is. Like, you know, I don't really. I have a neutral accent right now. I do slip into it when I go home. But if you heard my father-in-law, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to understand him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you know, it's, we're only talking about a 25-year difference, right? <laughs> so the so the film is very true to the different generations of Newfoundland. It sort of just occurred to me. Nice job, Andy. <laughs>